Okay, I think it's working. Oh, oh, you know they just like to talk. They want to participate. It's Long-Winded Wednesday. Wednesday. It's Long-Winded Wednesday. Yeah, we finally have an intro song for this. And it is inspired by the goddess Alicia Keys, also the singer of a song that we love at Building Bridges. Sing it and transform all the time. Girl on fire. So that's what we're gonna be opening up. If only you could be on the porch with us this weekend as we try to decide how to sing a theme song to you. <laughs> we practiced it a little bit too much, like maybe. <laughs> half an hour of like trying to improvise lyrics <laughs> it was fun it was fun Super and fun. very important <laughs> yes. it was very important is right <laughs> okay i'm just trying to uh so as you uh, get our ig followers or whatever you're doing marin yes today yes. is long-winded wednesday with building bridges i am jenny madrano i use she her her pronouns and the topic of this month is coping with DEI stress. So any kind of stress related to diversity, equity, and inclusion. We chose this topic because it's also Mental Health Awareness Month. So we're trying to be in line with also um, the kind of videos and posts we've been doing with our Transform. So today's topic specifically is what, Marin? Emotions. Emotions. As the path to empathy. Yes, I like And that. I showed you. So we have a tool that we use in our trainings. It's we have emotions cards. And what did you say to me, Jenny? She was like, Martin was like, I have the emotions page, like trying to be all nice and prepared with something. I was like, you're an emotions page. And it was just a snarky remark, but it's actually true. Now let's dive into how we're actually emotions pages. <laughs> Is actually pretty true. What's on that page, Marin? We've got surprised, sad, happy, distracted, anxious, bad, angry, peaceful. But as you see, when we go to next to it, like there's actually those words have are an access point to something deeper. Something deeper. I love something it. deeper. A different word, a more specific word. Some people are like, I feel bad. Well, what does that actually mean? Bad could mean all kinds of things. It Are looks like on our Facebook Live on Instagram or on Facebook, it's really like freezing. No, oh, shoot. Yeah, I see you're going in and out. Now it's getting better. Well, we'll keep going and see what happens. See if anything good comes out of it. I mean, <laughs> what are we going to do now? We're already going. We're doing it. We got it. So with that emotions page, that was modeled off of a, an emotions wheel that we used to use more that was in our tool that we borrowed it <clears throat> from another resource. And over time, we found that it just there were so many different emotions on the wheel that we wanted to figure out a way for them to be easier to kind of name and sift through. So we made an emotions cards booklet. I don't have one with me, but we'll show you sometime. Um, it's basically those those cards in flip form. In flip form, cut up. Yes, and if you attend one of our trainings, uprooted, rooted, liberated, you get to see what I'm talking about and how we use those emotion cards to help us with our dialogues around DEI. So. Uh, we usually start off with talking about how we use naming emotions and empathy and facilitation and then move into the personal realm. So <clears throat> for me, I feel like the, the process of naming emotions was not normal. I didn't grow up doing that. Um, I felt like it was, it was helpful for me because I'm a feeler already. 
I'm a thinker and feeler, like maybe even 50, 50, but still a very strong feeler. And I felt freedom in the ability to name my emotions in a space with people and for that to be validated as much as a thought that I came up with. Cause all my life, it's like, if I came up with the logical, rational thought around whatever, in this case, DEI, that's praised and validated, but there's not a lot of spaces where your feelings around those thoughts, your feelings around inclusion and equity are validated. What about you? Yes, I would also identify as a feeler and for the majority of my life, just very overwhelmed by it all um, and not able to like name or claim like what is mine versus what is other people's. But yeah, I, I've appreciated over time, especially in facilitation spaces. For the majority of my life, said, overwhelmed by it all um, and not able to like like what is mine versus what is other people's sorry <laughs> yeah, I, I've appreciated over time especially in facilitation spaces majority of my life said overwhelmed what? I don't know what's all, going on um, and not able to like name <laughs> like what is mine versus what is other people's sorry <laughs> yeah, I, I've appreciated over time especially technology issues oh my god is it better? I think it's better. I was like, who's talking? Is it old Marin or new Marin that's right in front of me? My bad. Okay, yes. Keep going, Marin. That won't happen again. That was, a, that was distracting. Yeah, there's a lot of layers of Marin. <laughs> there's a lot of Marin voice going on at the same time. Um, I don't even know what I was saying. I was saying that in facilitation, I have experienced one being a facilitator and how people naming their emotions is like this huge connector and place for folks to really like dive deeper into talking about or integrating some sort of concept around diversity, equity, inclusion that may or may not be new. Like, especially I have to name that like white folks, we tend to be very thought heavy or like I have, I'm intellectualizing this, like I understand that there is racism and I understand there's this historical context and there's there's a oftentimes uh if we've seen and I've seen and I've myself gotten stuck in this is what I know versus how does it actually make me feel like for me that's where I have been able to access an even deeper commitment and personal personalizing why why even as a white person want to be anti-racist want to be anti-oppressive but that, that there are these um true big emotions that that i have ignored and ultimately bring me into this deeper um i don't know collective or knowing that it's 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 bigger than this thought it's bigger than this fact it's it's way more important than than I know this thing, like I feel this thing. I, I, I'm angry about this thing. I'm frustrated by this thing. And if I can name that and, and uh, get myself there, then I've seen that like catapult folks into action more versus like inaction where a lot of, again, white folks get stuck. Yeah. And it's interesting, your explanation around like <clears throat> your process as a white person and learning how to name your emotions. I've heard that so many times and I've learned that just how much that's a common experience, especially among white individuals. And that's linked to white supremacy and all these different things, right? And we could get into that. But what's interesting to me is that every time that white individuals enter our trainings or do work with building bridges, Guess what they experience the most of? Emotions. It's like a water waterfall. Like it's like if they have been suppressing them all throughout their weeks, and then they come to their training that's on a Friday, and all of a sudden we're posting images that 
create a response or we're just bringing up the the idea of privilege in general or we're bringing up some questions that triggers the guilt it's just so many emotions and people as much as they're not experienced in naming them they want to because it helps <laughs> it helps to have those emotions validated it helps to have them recognized and come to the surface because then we can actually do something with them what do you feel you feel sad what kind of sadness Oh, you feel regret? What, what is that coming from? Is there a memory you want to talk about? Like all that is part of the transformative dialogues we have. And I love how you've explained it to numerous groups in different ways too, of like why we believe, because if someone in the group can say, I'm angry, or what was the word you just used? Sad. Sad. And, and can even go deeper of like, okay, if I'm angry, maybe I'm I'm resentful or I'm humiliated. Yeah. And like, as soon as those words are put into the space and then put into the group, then again, I literally, we've seen like little light bulbs or connections happen within the group because I know what it's like to feel humiliated. I, and then that brings up, uh, like you said, a memory or an experience that I had. And therefore I have this, I've never knew that, but like there's this unspoken connection I have with this person in the room that I've never met or, or maybe even have have been frustrated with for the whole morning in the circle, but now like there's this new pathway of um, of connection. Yeah, <clears throat> I see that a lot. That's what when we name our group norms, I spend a little time on I statements and how that relates to naming emotions. And it really is a game changer in a lot of conversations, especially because people want to stay in the surface level and they want to stay in the general statements to keep themselves safe. And that's what we do largely like as a society, we want to keep ourselves safe in our conversations um, or maybe more Western societies. And the second you start to say, okay, not, well, people need to stop um, treating younger people like they don't matter, they have a voice and we get the, person to say, I feel inferior as a young person because I don't have a voice. And that that creates like, like you said, it opens up the, the space for empathy. And people, whether you're young, old, black, white, brown, you know, any any identities can relate to that moment, but not just the, the feeling word, the feeling word attached to the human face and the human body that's even more powerful. How has naming emotions built or created a pathway for empathy in your life? Yeah, <clears throat> I, was, I was contemplating. That was what that breath was. <laughs> you read your mind and- I know you did, you do that very well. <laughs> um, To me, it stems from this greater knowing of the patterns and conditioning that I have grown up in as a white person in this world in terms of avoiding conflict at all costs. And that, and that is synonymous to sharing how I feel. Because if I shared how I felt to a lot of folks at certain points in my life, it would have been met with... <clears throat> fragility. It would have been met with denial. It would have been met with like, that's too much. And so in this new context that we've, or that I've been able to experience through building bridges, through facilitating, through like a new ownership and permission to name feelings. Um, and also like there, there's had to be this new learning too of like, I can name how I feel. And I also don't have to take on what other people, how other people respond to it. Like, and there's a free, like I I feel more free to be able to be like, ow, that landed here badly. Like I'm feeling disappointed or I'm feeling upset. And I guess it's it's a it's been a continued journey too of like just to be curious about what I'm feeling and why I'm feeling it in the moment. Like, am I feeling defensive? Then what has what has been said? And what is it again that is it really what that person said or is there like this all their old st old stuff or old stories or old hurts that I need to be um, 
uh, curious about. Uh, so I, to me, it's, it's a part of the anti-racist, anti-oppression work to remain curious about why I'm feeling what I'm feeling at every moment, whether it's because someone said something, whether it's because it's an image I've, in, I've encountered. And so it's, to me, it's, it's opened up a lot of, I think what I shared, like kind of saying that I'm, I'm a feeler too, like I get like, that can be my superpower in a sense. Like I felt like it's been such a detriment in my life, but also, also like, uh, to access feelings and to, and to like, again, how that can be such a connection for between folks, especially around diversity, equity, inclusion, identity, race. Um, it, it's like this huge ingredient that needs to be a part of all of it. Uh, so it's, it's just become, I've become impassioned about how, how we integrate that in everything we do in facilitation wise, but also, in my own relationships. And that's easier in some relationships than others. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I can see that. I think I relate to you on the, it sounds like you're seeing, talking about a deeper awareness of self. Yeah. That has really transpired over the process of learning how to name your emotions and like work with them. Yeah. And <clears throat> in my life, I feel like I'm always, I'm, always reflecting I'm very introspective wanting mm -hmm. to grow in, in self-awareness and in learning this tool of naming my emotions I feel like it does exactly what you were saying like in and realizing oh I'm feeling something or the other day when I was talking to you and I felt so so angry and I couldn't even name it at the time but then I I felt it I was like oh I feel I feel all of this right in my stomach feels like an apple it's an apple of anger. And then in being able to name that with you, we could do so much. Like you helped me <clears throat> talk it through and I realized it wasn't going away. <laughs> it wasn't going away unless I moved around. I really released it. I had to go for a walk and I felt like in visualizing it and knowing it and naming it and knowing that it was like a balled up ball of like anger, sadness, disappointment, discouragement, and then being able to dissolve that really by making peace with it and accepting it and not mm -hmm. resisting it. Like, oh, I shouldn't be feeling this way. I shouldn't be feeling this way. I'm just like, no, this is how I'm feeling. Now, how do we move it through? Mm -hmm. Emotions are energy in motion. How do we keep them in motion? Mm -hmm. What's the, you sent me a meme lately too that had, that said something about that. Do you remember it? I sent you like 3,000. <laughs> I know that was very, I'm going to see if I can find it real quick. Okay. <laughs> like I've sent you millions. This is true. Here. In the process of increasing your emotional intelligence, there comes, and that's essentially what we're talking about, right? Um, there comes a time when you feel uncomfortable. You consciously say to yourself, this is your uncomfortable feeling. Don't blame anyone. Own it, feel it, let it go. Love. Yes. Love that. This is your uncomfortable feeling. And then that's a whole, like, I hate dualities and I'm not about that. And at the same time, there is kind of like a duality or a spectrum of comfort emotions and uncomfort, discomfort. Mm -hmm. And uncomfort, there's joy, there's peace, there's lightness. There, and then on discomfort, defensiveness, anger, frustration, guilt, all that stuff. And so I feel like, I, I think, I don't know if it's conditioning or it's just because it feels better. We really have been trained to be like, seek that comfort, live in that comfort. Anything that brings comfort is good. Anything that brings discomfort is bad. So people avoid the kind of work that we do because of all the discomfort, but leaning into that brings us in, into such a deeper comfort because we're, we understand ourselves better. We're, we're connecting. That's a big part of building bridges. Like we connect deeper than any other program I've been a part of yep. in the way that we dialogue and the way that we lean into, see each other in all our messiness yep. and continue. Yeah. And like you said, I think, I think that's what it tends to be 
like the the rub when some folks are not suspecting or expecting our posture or like way that we do support dialogue in building bridges trainings like that they do that like there's just this overwhelmingly sense overwhelming sense of discomfort that they've just never experienced before and like just don't know what to do with it mm -hmm. and in a group the size of 10 to 30 people i get it yeah i i it's very it's very uh what's the word when you're not expecting it yep off putting yeah um but then people like you who lean into it and then take time to reflect because it brings up all these things mm -hmm. want more it's yeah. like oh because uh, not a lot of places pause take our time i i really appreciate that we take our time because the learning is not all in our papers and our agendas and our frameworks the learning is all in everybody at all times yeah. and it, it takes um presence as a facilitator to really bring that out and to bring it out in ourselves and daily in our daily lives yeah and ultimately like to me emotional intelligence is is building that capacity to be in discomfort essentially and 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 we we say to lean into it but ultimately to also move through it and like and get curious about the origination of it why why did it come up how did it come up what's familiar about it um what's here for me to learn from it and um ultimately where what can what's what's my next right step or where do i look next um to to me again thinking specifically with my my identity as being a white person, um, it's it's such an important piece of racial development and, and identity development to be able to be uncomfortable, to be in that dissonance of like what I thought I knew about myself, what I thought I knew about the world, what I thought I knew about life in general is completely being, um, I don't know, just blown up in front of me right now by being a part of this dialogue and conversation. Like, wait, what? <laughs> so it it is. It's this. It's I don't know. It's a. It's messy. It's hard. And I and ultimately is isn't emotional intel is emotional intelligence like what keeps people out of DEI work the most? Would you think? Hmm. Why do you ask that? Or. I don't know. I'm just, I guess I'm having an aha moment. Maybe that's like where the, that's where the biggest resistance is. And being able to like name your emotions and accept the discomfort. Yeah. Yeah. I think as I was hearing you explain it too, I'm like, it's because the more privileges are compounded, yeah. the more literal cushion you have in your life at, at all that's, times. There it is. So like I'm walking around and I have the privilege of having space and having privacy and yeah. having food all the time and having this and that. And, and when I think about race and white individuals, there are so many times when people of color have to just cringe and keep going. Yep. Ah, that was maybe a microaggression, whether or not I could name it, it made me feel othered. Yep. But you know what? This is part of my daily life. So I'll accept it. But then if there's, if it's the other way around, and now white people are getting countered with what they're saying in the workplace. All of a sudden it's like, it's like I'm walking on eggshells. <laughs> Welcome to the fucking club. Like yeah. I just like join the eggshell parade. <laughs> it's like, there's so much that comes with privilege of just being, being given, being assumed yes. that the way you are is fine. And yes. what you're doing is fine. And when when you don't have that assumption operating for you, which is any and all minority marginalized communities across identity, yep. you live with a daily sense of discomfort and you get used to it. And we're helping people of all different privileged identities have tougher skin, essentially. Essentially, yeah. And it but it's weird because there's this paradox of like you gotta toughen up, you gotta have tougher skin. And also your emotions are 
valid. Yeah. Uh, but there's, it's like, it's like kind of like um, helping raise a child. You don't <laughs> yell at them for crying. You say, that's okay. Cry it out. Feel the feels. But eventually you're going to have to brush your own teeth. <laughs> like whatever it is. Yeah, there's totally that element of, of like it's of infantile behavior or like inability to, to manage emotions, name emotions, and 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 be an emotion and and yeah, there's like just there's so much practice that needs to be had um, around that. And then I think for many of us who have a tougher skin or have uh, compounded marginalized identities, intersectional identities that maybe have less privilege. It's also a process of you have such tough skin. We have such tough skin. Brown people have it's such really tough skin. Let us have a space where you can feel this because you're carrying your shit. You're carrying your ancestor shit. You haven't been able to breathe. You haven't been able to exhale. What are you feeling? Because mm -hmm. that stuff gets stuck in us, you know? And I think if I didn't have the tools to recognize and name my anger, who knows what that day would have unraveled into. Like sure. I probably would have gone out and like got really mad at my roommates or like had some kind of participated in behavior that doesn't help me, you know, like everything yeah. that anger causes you to do when you're acting unconsciously. Mm. Good stuff. I love how we have these aha moments <laughs> mid live. <laughs> uh, yeah. And I guess it's not, yeah, it's just like, it helps kind of see, see some of this in, new, in a new light. Like when we facilitate a lot, I feel like sometimes it, there's an element of it, like um, it just gets, I don't know, what's the word? Anyway, it just feels like sometimes it can turn robotic. It's not really sometimes, but like to, to be able to talk this out and and have a new kind of lens on it is always it helps integrate it for me as well like to me this being able to talk through things like this just helps my learning helps my growth helps my healing yeah and and it makes me realize too just how much more we're talking about the stress that dei brings especially mm -hmm. mid-conversation development maybe your org organization is trying to change your whole culture and you're anticipating the stress is going to come there will be stress and discomfort or maybe it's you on this personal journey and you're like shit i just realized i have a long way to go i'm not yet an ally i can't call myself uh anti-racist yet or whatever it is yeah it's like we the way that we do it at building bridges is very holistic and it doesn't have to just take place it shouldn't just take place in your mind yep. it shouldn't just be a series of reading articles and trying to meet the right people who have the right language. Like if someone comes to you as a DEI trainer or a coach or even a speaker and keeps you all in your head, like red flag, red flag, we're not just heads, we're bodies, we're embodied humans. And like, we have to be able to name everything else that's going on because that's all part of the learning and the growth. Because our bodies have been politicized. That's what all of this is about is, <laughs> and I think, I mean, on the flip side too, when folks come to DEI trainings, we've had, we've experienced this as well, is how, I be curious about how you're showing up or like what your expectation is of the training. Because again, a lot of folks will come in and, and they'll be like, I know this already, or I've heard this already. And they're, again, they're just so stuck in here versus like, what is it actually, well, how do I actually feel about this? Or how is this actually showing up in me? Am I actually able to, feel that anger, feel that grief, feel that whatever. And a lot of folks, again, just haven't had the chance to. So when they do have the chance to with us, <laughs> it's like, <"Wah!" laughs> yeah, well, we're here for it. Yeah. We're ready. And we do it with ourselves. I do, now I do it on my own personally. It's a huge yeah. coping skill. We, we talked about it today and I feel like 
we didn't have much time. It's already one to get into relationships and what that looks like in other relationships of our lives. But I know with our friendship, it's been very helpful to have that freedom because having another person to literally mirror back in empathy, because we don't always have to use neutrality. Yeah. A lot of times you mirror back an emotional expression and presence. Yeah. And that helps me be like, oh shit, this is really sad, isn't it? This yeah. is really hard. Or this is fun. Yeah. <laughs> and like being, being able to share that with another person or community kind of amplifies the presence of that emotion. Yeah. And I think that sometimes is what I, I miss in some of their relationships that I have. Like there are some relationships who, who are where folks do feel like they have a little more emotional intelligence and can do like what, like you said, like kind of hold space or be with you in an emotion versus oftentimes, or there's the other flip side to it is like wanting to fix it or wanting to like, and I've done this, done this to you before too, of like, I just don't want you to feel this way. And so I'm going to be real awkward and like try and kind of like brush it off and go on to the next thing. <laughs> so yeah, there's, there's definitely more to talk about on that, but half hour goes fast. Yeah. It's one oh one. Um, emotions are the pathway to greater information. You know, yes. what I always tell our people. Um, yes. Thank you for tuning in or watching this later. If you do, we will be on next Wednesday. It's Long Winded Wednesday. 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 <laughs> Long Winded Wednesday. Yeah.